All right, here we are, the moment most of you have been waiting for. Uh, we are in Maya, and I'm going to quickly go over some basic setup that I've done to create the uh, renders that I have in Arnold for Maya. So here's my scene. Um, you may notice that the model is slightly different than what you guys have, and it's because Ben gave me a updated model that has an actual slight pose to it. Um, and his head's kind of angled down, so if we go to a perspective view, you can see it's uh, slightly angled down, and he's a little bit more sinister looking. So, uh, yeah, this is purely for the promotional and marketing material. Um, anyway, so here we are in Maya. As you can see, here is my scene. Um, I'm going to zoom out and show you the entire scene. So as you can see, I have one, two, three, four, five lights lighting him. Um, a couple of the lights are light linked to just the eyes and the cornea um, to get the reflections. And we have just some backlights and so on and so forth. It's pretty simple. We have a bounce card for underneath and then all these other um, planes here are bounce cards for the metal. Um, what I like to do is I like to change my camera uh, this is my rendering camera, and I changed the focal length to 100 millimeters. Um, I like doing that. I like 100 mil better than the standard 35. Um, it's 85 to 100 is a really nice look for portraits. Um, this is just in general photography. Uh, when you're doing portrait photography, an 85 mil or 100 mil gives a much more aesthetically pleasing look. Um, let me see if I can find an example of the difference between the millimeter. Um, the range of millimeter lenses and the, the visual effect. Hold on. Alright, I'm back. So here is a really good example of the difference between uh, the millimeter lenses. So here's a 35. This is a standard. And you can see, I mean, if you were just to look at this image by itself, it may seem kind of normal. Um, 24 is a little bit more, and then 19 goes really kind of oblong. But the higher the millimeter goes, you can see that the proportions start changing and it starts looking a lot more aesthetically pleasing as you go further towards uh, a longer range lens. So I like to sit right around between here 135 and 200. Um, anything more, I mean it's, it's minimal in terms of the difference between these two. But I find that you get a much better look um, as opposed to say, sorry, here's the 100 that we're using now um, versus the 35. It's a stark difference between the proportions. Um, this almost feels fish-eyed. So whenever I'm doing portraits of characters, I always like to change the focal length to about 100. Um, but feel free to experiment with higher range lenses just to see what you think and, uh, and you know decide on your own. But this is a really nice diagram of visually what happens to a face when you change the uh, focal length. Anyway, back to the demo. So I set that at 100, and then um, if we open up the hypershade, give you a quick view of some of the shaders I'm using. So I have one, two, three, four, five shaders for just the clothing. I have really crude shaders, sorry, six shaders including this gold, really crude shaders for the eyelashes and the tear line. Uh, which I actually didn't end up using, um, and the cornea. Um, this is, let's actually look at the cornea shade. It's pretty basic. Uh, diffuse is black. Um, specular weight's 100. Roughness is 0.1. It's cook tolerance, BRDF. Um, and we got a Fresnel of uh, 0 0.01. And then reflection color white, Fresnel on at 0.2. So all these numbers. This is for me, for personal work, it's not an exact science. This is stuff that I just tweak and tweak and tweak. Um, and literally I'll click render, save the render, change the setting, click render, and save the render and see the difference. And that's how I end up adjusting my shaders to get it to look exactly the way I want. Uh, one thing you need to note, especially when using Arnold, is that for the corneas, for example, You may notice that when you render it, it's going to render 
100% Chrome Chrome like. You have to go into your surface node of the geometry into the Arnold tab and you have to turn off opaque. This is kind of counterintuitive um, but by default it has this turned on as opaque and so you have to do that to all the different objects um, that you want to be transparent. So I turn that off as opaque and if I go to the skin you'll see that's checked on. This is by default. So that, that drove me nuts for quite a while before I figured that out. A um, couple other things. Before we go into the actual shader itself, I'm going to go into some of the parameters. Uh, the common tab, it's pretty basic. Nothing really has changed here. So in the Arnold tab, there is a bunch of settings here. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them because I don't use all of them or I don't change all of them. Uh, the ones I use primarily is the sampling tab and the gamma correction tab. Everything else I pretty much leave at default. So in the sampling tab, uh, you can see this gives you the run through of all the different kinds of sampling. The A sampling, the GI sampling, glossy sampling, refraction sampling, and then the total samples. So to give you kind of an overview of what, what's going on here. The settings that I have here currently are for very low quality settings. So you're going to get a lot of noise. Um, but it's for quick, speedy renders so I can see what's going on and make changes really quickly. Uh, for a production setting, I typically just double this for all the numbers. So you can see I went from total samples from, I think it was 16, 16, all the way up to 208. So it's quite a big difference. Um, these are the settings I like to use for production quality. It doesn't uh, slow it down too much. I'm still getting about 15, 12, 15 minutes of frame at production quality, which is pretty good. Um, for the diffusion SSS, so before is a point uh, cloud-based system by default. I use the ray trace system and this is fairly new in Arnold and it um, it's less cumbersome because before without the ray trace system you had to actually select the geometry, you had to go into the head, the shape node, you have to go into this Arnold tab and you have to mess with this SSS distribution samples and the spacing and it's just a big nightmare and it just kind of convoluted and it doesn't always get the best results and you're always getting a little bit of noise. With the ray trace it's way easier and then you can adjust this setting as needed, just this one setting here uh, which I've set to 4. Again, lower qualities you get more noise, higher qualities less noise but uh, you sacrifice rendering time. And now down to this gamma correction. Now this I'm not going to really go into because uh, it's just basically a, an entire week in and of itself. Uh, there is a great tutorial online. If we go to YouTube, and there's an artist named John Tojek. He works at Sony Imageworks, and he has a phenomenal tutorial on Arnold, specifically on. Um, the gamma correction. So if you click on this tutorial here, that's uh, gonna quickly give you this. Just skip through here. So this tutorial is a really fantastic t tutorial to talk about not just lighting and interior, but he actually talks about gamma correction and how it all works and working in a linear workflow. So I recommend that you guys work in a linear workflow and I recommend that you check out this tutorial and it'll give you a whole run through on a linear workflow. Um, and that'll answer a lot of questions that you may have about gamma correction. I've kept my textures at 2.2 so they're not linear um, because my textures coming out of Mari are sRGB and I'm not doing any kind of um, process in, in terms of publishing them or anything that turns them into linear. So I'm keeping them at, at sRGB so I can get one-to-one -one what I'm painting. But the driver, the lights, the shading, they're all at one for a linear workflow. Um, and then if I go to my actual um, 
Oh, well, I'll go into the render tab in a second. So, so now let's look at the skin shader that I have. Now again, these settings are completely arbitrary. These are things that I've just set up and tweaked and tweaked and tweaked to get something that I liked. Uh, the skin shader settings for this elf are actually very different than the ones that I have for the uh, female bust that I had for my Noma DVD. Uh, I actually started with that skin shader because I thought it would just be one-to-one -one transferable, but plugged in all my maps and rendered it, and it looked terrible. So I had to tweak a lot of things. So let me just close all these tabs so you can see what's going on. So we have the diffuse, which is ov obviously your, your epidermal layer that you're going to be plugging in. I've set the weight to 0 0.3. Um, I don't want this to overpower. The higher this number goes, the more it's going to start looking like clay or it starts looking really kind of less skin-like and more like concrete. So I like to keep this at a relatively low number. Going into the SSS weight, I set this typically at a ratio at the opposite of what the diffuse is, so it's a good balance. Um, I find you get a good look when you have this. Obviously you can adjust them independently and as you can see I don't have any maps plugged in and I think I mentioned this before I used to have maps plugged in because I wanted to have that uh, SSS weight plugged in here the fine where all the poor level detail is in in that mask but I couldn't get this to work um, but in production when I when I work on characters at work uh, we do have a slot for weight for a subsurface scattering weight and the look of artists that I work with plug this in properly and with the shaders that we have it ends up working. It in theory should work here but I think there's a bug or they haven't developed it um, further enough to get this to work the way that I have in my head. Um, basically wherever it's darker on a map it's going to be less scatter weight and where it's lighter it's um, more scatter weight. And then you could actually plug in the inverse of that map into this weight map here for the diffusion. So give that a test if you uh, still can't get the looks that you're looking for or the final result that you're looking for let me know and then we can dive into further and I can send some emails to Solid Angle and get some feedback. I have sent emails in the past um, but it's uh, it's kind of I haven't really gotten much of a response in the past but maybe we can push it forward. Anyway, moving shallow scatter. I have my shallow scatter plugged in. For this character, I actually used, if I go in here, I just used a deep SSS for every single subsurface channel because I wanted that deep, dark, rich tone and I didn't really need to paint any of their maps. Um, I plugged those in as a default and serendipitously I got what I wanted. And as you can see, I've set it up with this UDIM um, wildcard and in Arnold, it's all lowercase UDIM and then this will plug in your tiles and that's all you need to do. You literally need to swap out the tile number for this and you're good to go. Very very easy. And I set my shallow scatter weight to 0.85 and the radius to 1. Again, all these, if I open up the shallow, mid, and deep, all these are arbitrary. This is me just testing and testing and testing to get the look that I want. So for the mid scatter, as you can see, plugged in the deep SSS as well and set this scatter weight to 0.95 and the radius to 0.2 so it's quite a bit thinner it's quite a bit thicker for the shallow and then the deep same thing deep SSS weight 0.6 radius 0.4 for the girl for my Noman DVD um, I did have three separate painted maps in, uh, not including the epidermal that I plugged in to get kind of a layering effect and Arnold is really good about this layering effect so I would encourage you guys if you're doing more human like skin to give it a whirl um, and and paint different maps maybe the mid scatter has a little bit more uh, a bluer tone uh, but but very very subtle uh, in certain areas and then the shallow is closer to the epidermal and then the deep has that rich red and you can get some really beautiful color uh, combinations in there that gives it a really complex look. Primary reflection, I've got my spec plugged in and then I have my weight of 0.45, my roughness of 0.6 so it's not overly rough. Um, specular weight's 100, reflection weight 100 and I have for now fall off at 0.3. Secondary reflection same map. I have a secondary map plugged in here. So this is what's nice about the uh, Arnold skin shaders that you can have 
uh, your primary and secondary. So this secondary is going to be the wet map that I've painted. Um, and this is where this goes in. So you can see the weight's quite a bit less, but the roughness is much tighter. And the weight's all the same, except the um, Fresnel is a 0.5 to get more of a pop to the, to the shininess. So this is one of the most important options or dialog boxes in the skin shader for me. Uh, by default, I think you have sample only SSS and GI rays turned on. Turn that off. Uh, that's going to give some really weird looks, especially in, in the nose and stuff like that. So turn that off completely. And I think the SSS radius multiplier is set, I think, by default at 10. So the lower you go, the one the longer your render times. But I find that anything higher than one or two, it starts giving that really gummy, waxy, very hollow look. Whereas at one, based off of the size of my model, because uh, it's all relative to the size, uh, I find at one I'm getting exactly the kind of thickness and the meatiness of the skin that I'm looking for. So again, have a go at that. And then a bump map, I have a just basic bump map plugged in. Uh, you may be wondering where my displacement map is. So let's take a look at that. So you can see I have a displacement shader node here. I have two of them basically, one for the leather and one for the skin. If I open up this guy here, and drag this open. So my bump is plugged in into the uh, bump out normal. And then I have my displacement plugged in into this displacement slot of the shading engine, not the actual shader itself. So if I go to here, I actually have it plugged in to the shading engine of the shader. And so here I actually had a layered shader going on, but I ended up taking that stuff out because it wasn't doing what I wanted to. Um, but you can see I have the scale set here in Arnold. I have the scale set to uh, 0.2. I have auto bump turned on. Auto bump's really good. You want to turn that on because it's going to give you the finer detail um, that for some reason without it on it goes really soft and mushy. So I always keep that turned on. And my scale's at 0.65. And then I can also adjust um, into the actual, sorry, so you want to uh, plug it into the color instead of the alpha. And uh, this is basically the settings that I have for this. And everything else is ready to rock. One thing you want to note that for all the geometry that you bring in, you need to go to every shape node, and this is kind of cumbersome, and set the subdivision to Cat Clark. By default, I think it's set to none, Cat Clark, and then the iteration for uh, definitely the head or anything that um, needs to be subdivided at render time, set it um, to 2. By default, it's at 1, so it's going to be what it is. Um, at 2, it basically subdivides the model. And then it's exponential with every number you go up. So the higher the numbers, obviously, the longer the render times. And then for the displacement, you can see I have in the shape node, auto bump turned on. Uh, and this is for the, uh, the bump map that I have. And then, so I can pick this up, and then the height's at one, and this is all basically default. I haven't, I didn't need to change anything here. And I go back to my skin shader, and then I have my bump plugged in here. And then uh, you have the bump depth, which I've kept at one. And that's basically it. So if we go to an actual render that I've just done, here's a straight render from Arnold. Uh, as you can see, it took six minutes, very, very quick, and this is um, a full HD frame. So I'm going to just drag it open to full HD. And this is not production quality settings. So at the very least, it's pretty good for what you're trying to test. And again, six minutes of frame is not bad at all for a character like this. And so as you can see, the skin that I've ended up getting doesn't feel gummy, it doesn't feel hollow. Um, we're getting some of that translucency in the ears, which is nice. But especially the areas around the eyes, the nose, the lips, the chin, the cheeks, especially in this area here, uh, a lot of people, what happens is um, they set the, the shading depth too, too high and it ends up feeling very hollow. 
and like wax. Whereas if you if you set the shading depth to a bit lower but still keep the scattering contribution, you get some really thick, heavy, nice skin-like quality. And as you can see with my bounce cards, this is what's picking up all the reflections in the gold, uh, which worked out pretty well. And then, you know, as you can see, my my skin shader setup is very very basic. There's not much to it, um, but very quickly you can get some really interesting results. And again, I've had to balance the displacement a bit so I can get it in there, but it's not overpowering the model. Um, and then the eyes, if we look at the eyes for a second, I already showed you the skin, oh, sorry, the cornea shader. So if we go back to the eyes, Scalera, you can look at this really quick. Um, so basically, I have the epidermal color actually plugged into the diffuse, the, sh the shallow color, and the mid. I think I even have it. Yeah, I even have it as the deep. I think what happened was when I did the subdermal map for the eyes, um, it ended up looking very bloodshot. Whereas here, it's still yellowy, which I want because I want it to look a little bit older and weathered, but I, it went a little bit too red. So I ended up just as an experiment plugging in. Um, my epidermal to all of them and it, you know again serendipitously got what I wanted uh, the weights a little bit higher you can see maybe you can see the difference here I've actually set the scatter weight to 100 because um, I do want it to feel a little bit more gummy you're never gonna pick that up because there's not many contours to the eyes it's just a sphere inside the head um, but you always want that to feel nice and gooey uh, so I set that pretty high and then shallow weight 0 0.8 0 0.6 0 0.8 0.4 uh, the deep scatter. Oh, I actually can see I actually turned that off completely. Um, so again, this is just on the fly. And then primary reflection, reflection color, I have nothing, obviously. Um, and the secondary is nothing as well. Uh, you may notice that we painted um, the spec map for just the iris. So what I ended up doing is I did that originally and it got me an interesting look but it just started looking a little too stylized for my li my liking um, so what I ended up doing was taking that out completely uh, but again test it you know some of you guys may want that kind of stylized look I know Bruno is, is going for that stylized look so it may give a interesting result um, so I would just plug that into the primary reflection and then tweak some of these shaders shader settings um, and again turning uh, sample only SSS off and then the radius at 1 and then for the eyes, you want to make sure that you go to the geo, every geo here, and go to the, sh the shape node and make sure that you have Camel Clark turned on, and that'll subdivide it. Um, and again, the eyes were pretty high res, so I didn't need to worry about them. I left it at one. So there you go. There's a very quick setup and run through my Arnold shader. Um, I'm going to reiterate again, I'm not an Arnold guru, I'm not a look dev guru, this is just purely personal projects that I've used this in the capacity so I don't do it in production. Um, I'm not the best person to probably be demoing this kind of stuff because um, quite frankly I just learn it as I go. Uh, but I know a lot of you guys really wanted to see my shader setup and how I got an image like this. And so I just want to give you a quick run through. I'm sure you guys will have a plethora of questions. Um, feel free to ask them. If you have any questions I can't answer, I can definitely direct you to some friends that are way more knowledgeable in the world of Arnold than I am. And they can kind of shed some light on some uh, more kind of advanced questions you may have. And I believe there's going to be an Arnold um, workshop coming up. Uh, which some of you guys, if you guys are interested in, you can pick up. Uh, and that's about it. So I know this week in terms of video demos, it's extremely short. Uh, but I also know that you guys are kind of catching up with a lot of your work. So I didn't want to add one extra thing um, or too many extra things for you guys to deal with. So this final week is kind of just for you guys to play catch up, um, to see a little bit of the Arnold work that I've done in terms of the shader setups and uh, just to keep going with the work that you're currently doing. So uh, I'm going to end it here. I just want to, again, thank you so much.
for signing up for this new workshop. Um, it took a long time to put together and I'm really happy with it and I hope you guys picked up some, some useful tips that you guys can use in your careers. Uh, and like I said before, keep sending me your stuff even though the course may be over. Uh, just keep sending me your work and I can keep helping you guys uh, the best I can uh, until you guys finish the projects. So uh, happy painting, good luck with uh, your future work and your future endeavors and I hope to see some of you guys uh, in the near future.